Comic Book Corner is a video series that I haven't done for some time. Um, it's a series that didn't get many a viewer, for good reason. This is primarily a film and physical media channel, but I had my Comic Book Corner and my... Um, um, what's the other series I used to do? Comic Book Corner and Collectible Corner. Both series which I dropped um, Comic Book Corner some time ago. But I was asked questions. I have been asked questions as to if I would bring it back. And I had been toying with the idea. Um, I do enjoy taking a look at my comic books that I get and that sort of a thing. So thusly, here we are with another episode. And um, a sort of bit different because I don't know what's in these. Um, well, I do. But I don't, if that makes sense. We're going to find out. Welcome back to the channel, everyone, and to another episode of, like I said, my comic book corner series. So, yeah, so um, since I last done one of these, obviously I've picked up a lot of comic books and that sort of a thing. So I want to start introducing this series back into the fray. And thusly, here I am with this. Now, I have got comic books that I've picked up over there, which are already open. But I thought for this episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick, I'm going to open these five packages here. The reason they're sealed because they come from my comic shop, my local comic shop, and what I do generally, um, I've got a standing order in place with them, um, whereby what they do is they keep aside the comics that I want on a, on a weekly basis, but then that that has shrunk, that, that list has shrunk, and I generally buy my stuff on eBay, and then I go into store to pick said stuff up. So this stuff here is stuff that I've accumulated over various weeks that they've held aside for me, for me to go in and pick up. And each one that's sealed is respective of a particular order that I've put in place. Um, the reason I do it over eBay is primarily because of um, 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 uh, covers, choice of covers and things like that. And plus it's hard to manage my list. So it's easier for me to do it like this. Um, but there we go. So we're going to get into these packages one at a time see what comics have been brought my way So we're going to open the first one together. Like I said, I don't know what's in here. We're going to find out um, Obviously there's several comics in each package. So here we go. Open up the first one. Obviously they are all bagged and boarded and what we have here Okay, so let's have a quick look. So first up is issue one of Vampirella versus the Super Powers, which is a um, um, cosplay photo variant cover um, with the character of Draculina on the cover. And um, Draculina is a Vampirella character. She comes spawns from the sort of pantheon of Vampirella characters. These are published by Dynamite Comics. Um, and I, I, I enjoy Vampirella as a, as a character. Um, yeah, like I said, this is issue one of the said comic book. Um, yeah, shall we adjust the camera for this? Shall we adjust, let's adjust the camera so we can have a look at them like that, shall we? Yeah, let's do it like that. Okay, so with the camera this way around, we haven't really got to look at my ugly mug and we can take a look a bit more about the comic book. So like I said, issue one from Dynamite. Um, And like I was saying, Vampirella is a comic that I, I do read, primarily because it's not linked to any film or TV series. Um, so I don't got to sort of feel like I'm being burdened by Marvel or DC with their current, whatever comic is to do with whatever's on TV, kind of a thing. Um, that's not to say I don't get Marvel comics. Of course I do, and some DC. So what else do we have here? So next we have... Um, Vampirella Superpowers issue one again with a variant cover on it. So it is the same comics what we just looked at, but a different cover. Next up, we have Spawn. Spawn issue 22. King Spawn actually. Um, I love Spawn. This is a, a comic book that is ripe for a remake. Um, 
And there's loads of different Spawn comics at the moment, and I, I'm enjoying them all. Um, yeah, created by Todd McFarlane, obviously. Um, big in the 1990s, 92 when this comic first started, and still going strong today. Not King Spawn, I'm talking about Spawn itself, started in 1992. Um, these always have great art, great storytelling, um, Sometimes very dark, bleak, and a fantastic looking character. And I was there when Spawn first came about in 92. I do have the early runs of the comic book. I stopped reading for a while and then I went back. Then we have issue four of Barbarella, the center cannot hold. This is a cosplay photo variant. Um, obviously Barbarella, you might know from the film. Now, um, this is a comic book published by Dynamite Comics again, who do Vampirella. Um, the art style in this one isn't particularly the best. There you go, a bit of page comic there with a um, Michael J. Listener cover. He's a good artist. Um, yeah. So that's issue four of Vampir um, it's not Vampirella, no it's not, it's issue 4 of bloody um, Barbarella, Barbarella, Vampirella, we can keep up with these Ellas, Ella, 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 and my Umbrella, Vampirella, Ella, Ella, so issue 4 of that, then we have, um, what do we have here, That's, that was the box cover thingy, then we have Spider-Man 2099 Dark Genesis, um, Again, a character I love. I love Spider-Man 2099. So whenever he gets a, a comic book, I will um, pick it up. Now, I'm glad that they've put him back into his original suit, as opposed to the white suit they gave him a little while ago, more recently. Um, there's the Punisher, new version of the Punisher 2099. I don't particularly like the outfit on this one. I prefer the old Punisher 2099, the original look. But... It's great to have the character of um, Jake Gallows in the mix, in the fray. Um, doing him a little bit of justice. No pun intended there. Um, the artwork in this is something to be desired, I will say. It's not fantastic. Um, that Ghost Rider 2099 there, yep. Um, I do like the 2099 universe of characters. Always a joy to, to, to visit. Okay, so that was that first bag of stuff. So now we're gonna open up the second, oh sorry, second one. Um, which is quite a thick one, and it's this one here. Let's open it up to take again. Oh, no, there's two there. It ain't quite a thick one. My, my fault, there was two together. So this one's quite thin. Um, just take it up, open it up and take a look. Oh, hold on a minute. Okay, so we have Issue one of Grim Spotlight. Um, Lovecraft's Legacy, 34 page of content. Um, Xenoscope, published by Xenoscope. This is like part of the Grim Fairy Tales line of comic books. Um, and yeah, an enjoyable universe they've sort of crafted for themselves over at Xenoscope with all these sort of fairy tale esque characters that they, they've um, done a spin on, shall we say? Um, and, and yeah, again, not linked to any sort of film or TV series, so I feel like I'm getting something out of it other than a retread of maybe what I've seen. So as a comic book collector, it was fabulous when Marvel and DC started with all their films. Um, but the downside is, is that, you know, there was so much of it, but it kind of, I felt I was getting my fix of that stuff in film rather than in comic. So it kind of made reading comics a bit sort of moot, a moot point to a degree. And then we have issue two of Star Trek, the motion picture Echoes from IDW, who currently have the rights to um, Star Trek comic books. And this is a, a, a comic book series of Star Trek that is set during that era of, of Star Trek 1, that kind of, um, during that timeline, that, that era of Star Trek in film. Okay, 
Now, generally, I, I only I don't read too much sci-fi comic book wise, um, because for me sci-fi doesn't necessarily work in comic book form. But every now and then, I'm intrigued by a, a, a little concept, and I might pick up a Star Trek miniseries or something along those lines. And that's really what happened there. So those were the only comics in there. So let's open up that next one that was adjacent with that. Let's take a look. Okay, so. What do we have first here? We have Catwoman issue 56 um, with a Terry Dodson cover. Terry Dodson, a fantastic artist, a fantastic cover artist for, well, whenever he draws any covers. He's, he's really good at it. Um, New, my Adventures with Superman there, the new animated series. I have done a review for that, if if interested. It came up a few days ago. Um, yeah, so DC's Catwoman. Um, I'll give it to DC. They do have um, decent art in their comics, generally. Um, they generally take more care with their artists than what Marvel offers up now. Um, yeah. So there's that. Next up is issue two of the new Avengers series, which has come to us from Marvel. There we go, Vision phasing through a wall on the cover. There's a variant cover. Um, I think there was numerous covers available. Um, we have Captain Marvel, Falcon Captain America, Scarlet Witch, Vision, Thor, Iron Man and Black Panther as your rostered characters for this Avengers comic book. Um, whether I'll continue reading this or not it remains to be seen. Um, Avengers isn't a comic that I read always. Um, I liked it when Brian Michael Bendis was was writing it, and you know it had some good eras back then. But it's a comic that I can sort of go to, step away from, go back to. Um, there aren't many comics now that I am 100% loyal to or collect every issue of. They sort of come and go. Now here we have issue one of Cult of Carnage Misery. Um, Marvel putting a lot into the characters of Venom and Carnage at the moment. And thusly, we have a Carnage-esque comic book here with um you know it's got some decent art in it um it's not bad art like i said this is an issue one there's you know a lot of the carnage comics you know um the last venom film was a while ago venom let there be carnage so i'm surprised they are putting this much effort into carnage at the moment um Venom Carnage must still be big sellers for Marvel if they're spending a lot of time with this. And there's the character of Misery, the new Carnage-esque character. Now we're going to go back a bit with this next one because I've got two covers here as well. We're only going to take a look at one. And this is for a comic book called Battle Chasers. And this is issue 10 from Joe Madura. Now, Battle Chasers is a comic book that came from Image a long, 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 long time ago. Um, and Joe Madura wasn't exactly the best at getting this stuff out and the issues were few and far between. Um, you know, almost a year could pass before you got a new issue. That's probably a bit of an exaggeration, but it certainly wasn't far off. So, so, so now we've got it back and you've got a story so far a bit there because you need it. Because even though I've got those earlier issues of Battle Chasers, can I remember um, the goings on within? I certainly can't, no. Um, yeah. Now I believe this is to be a different artist than what we usually had, but um, it's keeping with the sort of style of the original Battle Chasers. I can't remember who the original artist was now, um, because it's been so long, but they've sort of trying to keep with that aesthetic that the series once gave us. Um, so it'll be interesting trying to get back into Battle Chasers for the very reason that, you know, decades have passed since, um, since this comic even had 
had the last issue released. So like I said, two covers for that, uh, variant covers. Then moving on to the next package, is this one here. Obviously I put paid on it because like I said, I paid online. Sometimes they do post stuff out to me where it says, um, when, when they miss this for me, so to speak. Okay, here we go. Something from DC now. And I was intrigued by this. And this is Steelworks. Issue one of Steelworks. Um, I love Steel as a character. Steel here, um, John Henry Irons, is a character that came about after the death of Superman. He was one of the four Supermen who took the Man of Steel's place. And he was literally the Man of Steel. Um, and he's a character that Steel is... Um, relevant in, in DC Comics from time to time and he's one of my favourite sort of Superman characters, um, you know, side characters. Um, it's a shame we don't get far more of him. Um, obviously a wealth of super people in the DC universe now, look. So, yeah, John Henry Irons as Steel. And it's nice to see they still got the the you know the sort of original outfit that he had before. Obviously, John Henry Irons is a character that is in the Superman and Lois uh, series, um, TV series. That being said, um, not he's not as visually like what we get in the comics. He, he's different, but it's still a good character. But I would like to see him more akin to this. Obviously, Shaquille O'Neal did do a movie of this character, um, which I have on DVD. Not a very good film at all. Um, had no connection to Superman at all, the film. And I've double-picked on this comic here. I didn't realise that I've bought it twice. Um, there we go. So then we have... Spawn itself, issue 342. Obviously, I did speak about Spawn earlier. This is a continuation. You know, this series has been going since 1992. Um, and, yeah, I, I still, like I said, I enjoy Spawn as a character, Spawn as a comic book. I did drop off of reading it for some time, for a good <laughs> couple of decades, probably, or near on. And um, then I... Came, has come back to it more recently with the omnibus editions where you got 50 issues packed into one thick trade paperback they're available on amazon they cost about 50 quid a piece but i think they dropped to about 38 quid for 50 issues of spawn it's fantastic um so that's how i'm sort of catching up um and i've got one the one i've got on pre-order takes me up to issue 250 so i've got the first four issues one to 200 like that in that form um the fifth book is on pre-order. Now, I do have the early editions of Spawn. But they're in a box somewhere, and I've got so many comics that those boxes are God knows where. I wouldn't be able to pinpoint them. Um, and then we have here, issue one of a new Loki series. Now, this had variant covers, and I opted for this cover with Lady Loki on it. Um, it's a variant edition. It says so there. It's a legacy edition. It's 27, so that's sort of if you was going to keep in the standard number in. Um, and yeah, obviously we have Loki season two um, coming to us sometime in the near future. So I imagine that in the comic books, Loki will um, be utilised a considerable amount more with his own series and things like that. Again, whether I'm going to stick with this or not it depends on what sort of a read I have with it, whether it's any good or not. Whether I enjoy it. Um, Time will tell. And at the moment, Marvel are doing a lot of, um, you know, sort of facsimile editions. So here we have a reprinting of the very first issue of Iron Man. And I do pick some of these up and they've got the old adverts on as well. Um, so these are nice additions if, if you know, you want to look back onto older content, um, even with the adverts and all that. That's just great. So printed exactly as they were back then, obviously on better stock paper. But um, 
all adverts um, included in. So yeah, issue one of Marina advert man, Captain Marvel, the original Captain Marvel. Um, Iron Man. Nice. So we've got one more pack to get through and then we'll call it a day for this um, corner. And this is quite a thick pack as you can see. Um, again, a page there. So let's open it up and see what we're presented with. Okay, there we go. Quite a bit in this one. Quite a bit. Um, so we're going to take a look. And there was a foil cover I saw. What did I get with a foil cover? I don't know off the top of my head. But anyway, so first up, we have issue one annual of the Scarlet Witch. Current Scarlet Witch. It, well, she got a series at the moment, and um, yeah, this is an annual of hers. Um, I really like the character of Agatha Harkness there, and um, the character of Scarlet Witch in the. Um, MCU. I think Elizabeth Olsen is fantastic in that role. She's got fantastic nuances and thusly that sort of brought me into reading um, the current Scarlet Witch comic book. So yeah, fantastic. Um, and then we have a, an, a, a Spawn comic, but I'm not sure. It's King Spawn. So was that, the, is this, what was the issue of the King Spawn I showed you earlier? I'm now having a gander. Issue 22. So this is issue 23 of King Spawn. Um, the next issue it comes after the one I showed you earlier. And again, I don't need to tell you my love for this character. Or for the character and the world of Spawn. Um, I collect Spawn figures whenever I see a nice one. Um, that appeals to me. Um, yeah, I've sort of my love for Spawn has been revived and that feels great. He's a cool looking character. I've got some of the figures from the, you know, the, the more combat range and um, yeah, all good. Now recently, we have had a new version of the Incredible Hulk start, new Hulk comic book. And Hulk always intrigues me because sometimes it can be written really well and sometimes not so much. Um, this looked like, as you can see, aesthetically darker take on the Hulk. And I'm hoping that that is exactly what I get out of the storytelling, a more mature, um, darker tone. There was a series of Hulk a long time ago, probably maybe 25 years ago. I can't remember who it was written by, but it was very much him on the road, on the run, being chased by um, government forces, government agencies, and it spent a lot of time with Bruce Banner, with him only hulking out every so often. And it was more akin to the original TV series of the Hulk, and it was probably one of the best runs of the Hulk I've ever read. Because Hulk, for me, is, is probably a difficult character to write because when he's in Hulk form and he's just angry, okay, I know you have smart Hulk and all that sort of a thing, but um, you've got to focus on the Bruce Banner persona more so than the Hulk because there's not a lot going on with that character than Crash Smash and all that. So next up, we have issue two of Ghost Rider, Danny Ketch. Um, yeah, Danny Ketch had his own Ghost Rider series at the moment. Danny Ketch is the second Ghost Rider after Johnny Blaze. When they brought Ghost Rider back in the 90s, they gave him an update, an updated character, updated version of the, the, the Ghost Rider. And Danny Ketch is one character that's never got a live action Ghost Rider version. We've had Johnny Blaze with Nicolas Cage. And in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. we have seen the Ghost Rider with a car. Um, name eludes me at the moment but here you go you've got scarecrow in there um yeah and, and uh, out of the two danny ketch and uh, johnny blaze um i sort of grew up on the danny ketch ghost rider more so i was aware of the original ghost rider i like ghost rider but again in writing he suffers a similar a much similar fate as as um as hulk does um do you know what I'm saying? Diff quite difficult to write for when he's the rider. And here we have 
issue two of Marvel Disney's Scar. Disney are doing these, these villain-centric comics at the moment, and I am getting the, the only one I'm getting is for The Lion King, and it's Scar. And I like the animation, um, the animation, the, the art style, sorry. Um, and yeah, they're not bad, they're pretty good. They're fun enough. You know, Disney, obviously Marvel, gargoyles, I do get gargoyles. Um, again, a lot of variant covers for Scar, as you can see there, a lot to choose from. <coughs> um, which is why I, I tend to, you know, buy online, because I get to pick. And at the moment, we have a few more here. We'll get through them. So we're going to go with another Xenoscope title called Myths and Legends, Dagon. This is um, Xenoscope Waterly. Um, so 72 pages, and again, all set within that realm of sort of fairy tale type of characters that Xenoscope built a, a universe revolving around. Um, I've got the very first issues of Grim Fairy Tales. Well, I've got all of the Grim Fairy Tales. Original printings. Um, very small company when it first came about. The print run on the first issues must have been pretty damn small. Um, but yeah, I did start and I've sort of kept with them for the most part. I don't get every Xenoscope title because they have quite a lot of output. Um, and it did become a bit too much to keep track of and, you know, and obviously varying quality on stuff. Um, but yeah, so there we go. There we go, Lovecraft's Legacy, Robin Hood, 100. You know, Robin Hood's had 100 issues, wow. Grim Fairy Tales issue 75, but that's of a new run. So that's like essentially volume two. Masumai, whatever that is. Um, yeah, Van Helsing. Yeah, decent. Okay, we have three more comics to get through, but only two to look at, because the next two are variant covers of the same comic. And that is issue one of Victory. And issue one of Victory with a cosplay photo cover. Now, this is from Dynamite Comics. Um, obviously, Vampirella there in the mix. Um, that's, a, that's a drawn, that's not a photo cover, that's, that's drawn. But I wouldn't be surprised if there was a model who modelled that image for them to draw over. Um, so, yeah, so again, these have very sort of... Um, they play on a sort of sex cells kind of a thing for the covers. Obviously, they do. Um, but the content isn't in any way, shape or form, um, you know, that, that ilk, shall we say. They are just comic books, just with... Um, titillating covers, shall we say. Um, yeah. And this is part of uh, Vampirella and Dracula Rage, another Vampirella series. Victory, Betty Page, again, Lisner cover. Again, look at all those variant covers that you could possibly choose from. Um, becomes a bit overwhelming, to be honest. So there we go, there's that. And we're now gonna look at our last issue and that comes at us from Marvel Comics and it is the new issue one of Ultimate Invasion with a metallic reflective cover like so with Miles Morales' Spider-Man on the front and that ref metallic stuff does spill over to the back of the comic like so. Um, see it reflecting the light there. Bit finger of dirt marks on it but there we go um yeah chapter one good artist's copy um now i don't know who this is written by currently it's probably on the back page is it no it's not so yeah we have um yeah home invasion and this will i'm guessing will all be to do with you know um Jonathan Hickman's a writer, and Brian Hitch is the penciler. Brian Hitch, he's a, he's a decent artist. He's drawn for Ultimate before, the Ultimates and stuff, I believe. Um, although his ink doesn't look as good, the inking doesn't look as good as what it once was. 
but I'm guessing that there's a different inker to it now, um, which is detracting from Brian Hitch's art. And that can happen. And I'm guessing this is about uh, other dimensions, um, you know, like what's similarly happening in Marvel films at the moment. The dimensions coming together and crashing and all that sort of stuff. You know, incursions and stuff like that. So, yes. So, there we go. And some sort of art panels on the back, you know, before the pages are finalised. And Blade's getting a new comic book, one for me to miss out on, I would guess. And, yeah. A dark, violent journey through Marvel's supernatural underworld begins here. Yeah, Supernatural Underworld. They're going to go the film version of Blade, probably. What they're going to do with the films where Blade is less of a vampire hunter and more of a um, monster hunter. So there we go. There we go. There's that finished. So that wraps it up. So there we go. That wraps it up for another comic book corner. Um, I didn't know what was in them packages. Obviously, I, I did know in the sense that I purchased them online, but weeks go by before I go in and pick up. Um, thusly, by which point I don't know what I'm going to open and is going to be in said packages and things like that. But, yeah, there we go. There's just some comic books that I've picked up or bought over the past probably five weeks or something like that, considering the amount of back packages there were to un um, open there. And um, that's me done. And I shall see you all later. Thanks for watching all, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care and goodbye.